Okay. Happy Wednesday. This is Wellness Wednesday. I do this call two times per month. So every other week, um, there is a call on a specific health topic. So today we are talking about cholesterol. And I really want to break down cholesterol because I feel like nobody really understands it. So I would like to be able to get um, a generalized concept of understanding what they call good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, why we have cholesterol and why you might have elevated or low cholesterol in your body. So first and foremost, I will just introduce myself. I'm Carrie Drinkwine. I'm the owner of the Institute of Regenerative Health. I train and certify regenerative health practitioners around the globe. And I also own Wise Wellness Clinic. Um, we have extremely high results helping our clientele reverse chronic illness naturally by changing the internal environment of your body. So with that said, the, one of the most powerful things um, that we can do as humans is change the internal terrain of our body so that what I call dis-ease does not exist. So all imbalance and diagnoses that we receive from uh, you know, the medical industry is all a direct reflection that there's an imbalance or an incoherence in your lymph system or your cellular system. So I'm very passionate about teaching people that we do not have to be subject to what we call quote unquote genetics. And the reason I want to share this is because we, I hear this all the time in my clinic. Well, it's genetic. My mom had high cholesterol. Oh, it's genetic. My, actually the work of epigenetics has proven that genetics only plays a 5% role in your actual health. 5%. 95% is epigenetics, which means that the environment that surrounds your cell is more important than the genetic information within your cell. So I want to say, start with that just to empower you, to let you know that you do not have to be a byproduct of your genetics. I always say genetics loads the gun and lifestyle pulls the trigger. One of my mentors shared me, that comment with me along the way, and I continue to share that because it is true. And I think we can also oftentimes fall subject to believing this genetic um, predisposition. So with that said, let's talk about what is cholesterol. First of all, cholesterol is an extremely vital part of you being alive. So I love to not demonize cholesterol and to look at what a beautiful blessing it is and how brilliant our body is. But cholesterol is simply a structural component of a cell membrane. Okay. And it actually serves as a building block. So think about like amino acids or what builds your muscle tissue. Cholesterol is actually a building block for the ability to synthesize hormones, steroids, vitamin D, and bile acids. It's a very, very important piece of your overall human function. And every single cell contains cholesterol and uses cholesterol for its function. So besides their structural role, like cholesterol's structural role is providing stability to the cell um, and fluidity, it also regulates the cell's function. So this is really, really important because we are in a society where we view cholesterol as good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. And a lot of doctors are out there thinking that the lower your cholesterol, the better. And so I want to talk about how low is too low um, for your cholesterol to not have good health and actually why you might be experiencing elevated cholesterol outside of the common narrative of eating high triglyceride fatty foods. So let's start with first and foremost, if we're eating high loads of McDonald's or processed foods, or I should leave names out, but you know what I'm saying, the really bad high fat triglyceride fatty acids, greasy oily foods, are you going to have a cholesterol issue? Yes. Why? Because you have elevated triglycerides in the body. Triglycerides are a very complex fatty acid. And what happens in the human body is we can't have excess triglyceride fatty acids. It will cause stagnation, coagulation, inflammation. And so our body produces cholesterol, what we would call LDL cholesterol, in attempt to um, carry this excess triglyceride fatty acids out. So the body is actually making cholesterol based on your demand. If you demand it, it will be supplied. 
by your body. So let's go on um, a little bit more PG for a moment. And let's just talk about LDL versus HDL. So we have LDL cholesterol, which is often called the quote unquote bad cholesterol. I don't really like to call it good and bad because they're actually both extremely important to your overall health. Like we need both of them. And if we didn't need both of them, we wouldn't have it. So I LDL can be the cholesterol that technically causes you problems if it gets too high, but it is essential to life function, cell function, and your nervous system function. So LDL is low density lipoprotein. Um, that's the actual definition of it, low density lipoprotein. And it actually accounts for about 80% of the cholesterol in your body that's actually delivered to your adrenal glands. Um, what LDL does is it actually collects in the walls of your blood vessels and it this is why it can cause problems. This is why it's called the bad cholesterol. So when we when we have it collecting inside the blood vessel walls, it can obviously lead to a blockage, a heart attack, a stroke. Um, but your body actually needs this cholesterol. And one of the main reasons is that it protects your nerves and it helps make healthy cells and healthy hormones. When we have LDL that's way too low, we get into trouble. And I'll be talking about some of that trouble in a moment. But what LDL does is it actually takes, it, it acts like a fairy system. It actually takes insoluble cholesterol or high triglyceride fatty acids from the bloodstream. And then it carries it to the nerves and to the nerve cells and any other tissue that needs it. So it's like a distributor and like a fairy system. And when we have, like I mentioned, excess triglyceride fats, then more LDL will be produced. And the body says there's too much triglyceride fatty acid in here for us to stay well. So I'm going to make more LDL. I'm going to make more low density lipoprotein in order to carry this excess load out. Now, same goes if you don't need to carry that excess load out, say you lower your triglyceride fatty acids, the body will stop producing so much LDL because it's not in demand. So with that said, I want to explain just like one thing about the body. And a lot of you have heard this if you are on here and your students or graduates or whatever are sharing this with a friend. The body is trillions of cells and two fluids. We have a blood system and we have a lymphatic system. We have 75 trillion cells and two fluids, blood and lymph. Lymph is 80% of our body's fluid and it is a lipid-based system. So lipid-based system, lipid, low density lipoprotein, these systems run together. And that's why I wanna bring this in. So, your lymph system is what cleans all of your glands and your organs, and your blood is what feeds all of your glands and your organs. And you will find lipids and cholesterol within your lymph system and in your blood system. So these systems and their function are very, very important. Now, the second thing I want to make note of is that your blood pH has to stay at a 7.4 at all times. It can never waver. And so what the body has to do in order to maintain pH is the body will use alkalizing agents. So for example, the traditional American wakes up every morning and has a cup of coffee. Coffee is highly acidic. It's a very high acid. It is not in alignment with that 7.4 pH. And the average American, let's be real, has eggs, toast, some, some form of dairy for breakfast also very high acids between the pH of one and two. Now these foods are what we call acid forming. They leave behind an acid ash after consumption. And those are dominant in some really acidic minerals. We're looking like phosphorus, nitrogen, and sulfur is kind of the residue that is left behind when we're eating acid forming foods. So because this is so unnatural for our human pH, our body has to alkalize it. It says, I need a fire extinguisher. It's too hot in here. And so the body looks for a fire extinguisher. And so there are three primary ways that we buffer acid outside of using water. Now, we all know if we've eaten too much salt or had too much wine with some girlfriends or whatever it is, the next day you wake up and you feel puffy, right? You're retaining fluid. That is because water is acting as a buffer for that acid, for that heat. And it's actually surrounding the cells with water to protect them and hydrate them. So you're holding water. 
After you get into a more alkaline environment, the body flushes and lets it go. So that's one of the primary defenses the body has to acid. Now let's talk specifically about alkalizing agents. Uh, the body will use three components. We either use fat, which is lipids, cholesterol, which is very, very alkaline. Cholesterol is the pH of eight, or we use calcium. And the reason why is these all are pHs of seven plus to eight. So these are very alkalizing agents that can diffuse the heat in the body. So every body is different. I would say weight is waste. If the body is carrying extra weight, it's because it's producing lipids to trap the toxins and protect the cells from damage from those toxins. That's, that's a small brief part about weight. If you're producing lots of cholesterol and you're like, I don't even eat high cholesterol foods. I don't eat processed food. I don't eat like lots of meats or whatever. This was me. So just a little backstory. I used to have autoimmune disease and I had elevated blood cholesterol as a vegan, you guys. Um, and I share that because I, I don't wave the vegan flag. I think that that is, um, you can be vegan and you can be very unhealthy as vegan. So really focusing on what are we putting in? Is it plant centric? Is it alkaline forming? What types of foods? I was on a high protein vegan diet. So I was on a very, very high protein rich because that's what I was taught. I was on a no fructose, no fresh fruits, um, lots of protein powders, lots of exercise. And what I was doing was producing way too much acid in my body. Protein is acid dominant, it's proton dominant. When you're building lactic acid, you're acid dominant. So I was building a ton of heat in my body and my body needed to diffuse that heat. And it started using cholesterol. I want to tie in the adrenal glands in a moment because you're going to see that elevated cholesterol is related to two primary organs or glands in the body. Number one is the liver and number two is the adrenal glands. And if either one of these glands are struggling, you will either have hyper, uh, like a hyper high level, or you'll have hypo, which will be low level of cholesterol. So I hope that makes sense that if our internal terrain is acidic, the body will use calcium, cholesterol, or fat in order to buffer that heat. So if you're dealing with high cholesterol, it's most likely that you're dealing with high acid in your system, too much acidity. So with that said, um, let's break down low density lipoprotein just a little bit more. It actually is a fat. It is a lipid and it circulates in the blood and it moves cholesterol around the body to the tissues that need it for cellular repair. I, when I studied some of um, uh, Barbara's work uh, back in the day, uh, she always taught that high cholesterol means that there's high damage in the body. When there is damage or adhesion tissue or issues in the tissues, I would say, the body will make cholesterol to kind of put a bandaid over it, like a salve. It's very soothing, it's very healing. And that's part of the reason that the body is producing it. So if you have high cholesterol, you actually do have a high level of damage inside the body. And the body is using that cholesterol as a reparative and a restorative agent to all of the cells. So it actually deposits it inside of artery walls, inside of cell wall. Um, and because, because cholesterol and triglycerides, remember those triglyceride fatty acids are both insoluble inside of water, they have to be associated with proteins in order to flow through the blood. So this is a very important piece. The, the next piece that I'm going to talk to you about is when we have defects in LDL receptor function. So LDL is low density lipoprotein. It's used to carry out excess triglyceride fatty acids. It's used to synthesize hormones. It's used to take up extra cholesterol that's in the blood and bring it to the nerves and tissues that need it. And in order for that to happen, every part of the liver cells have to be functioning. So the liver is what we call hepatic tissue. And uh, basically if we have defects in what's called the LDL receptor function, this can cause hypercholesterol um, issues. So you'll have a very elevated level. It's basically what's called an autosomal disorder when this happens. And because LDL receptors on the hepatic tissue on the liver 
are absolutely 100% necessary for the binding and the uptake of LDL. In order to take up LDL, low density lipoprotein into the blood, it actually has to have this hepatic tissue functioning properly. So what we'll see with low density lipoprotein, if low density lipoprotein is getting really, really, really high, you're dealing with a liver issue, elevated liver enzymes, maybe too much fat on the liver. And so this is starting to affect your low density lipoprotein. And what's happening is the liver is responsible for every single detoxification process in your body. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, what you put on your skin, any chemical, pesticide, herbicide, too much acid, bacteria, fungi, et cetera, has to be processed through the liver. So if your liver is struggling, it is likely that you're going to have issues with this LDL, this low density lipoprotein. Now, the second thing I want to, to bring up on that is next, I want to talk about HDL. So HDL helps break down LDL or bad cholesterol, right? So HDL stands for high density lipoprotein, also extremely necessary for life force and support. It's a type of lipoprotein that actually circulates in your blood. And so we have to remember that lipoproteins are simply particles and they're made of lipids, which are fats and proteins. That's what they are. That's what HDL is, that's what LDL is. And their main job is to transport fats through your body into cells that need it. So high density lipoprotein is sometimes called the good cholesterol because it will absorb excess cholesterol in the blood. And what does it do with that excess cholesterol? So it carries that excess cholesterol back to the liver. And then the liver breaks it down with bile acids and flushes it out into being excreted from the body. So obviously you want HDL. So if your LDL is high, you also want a good level of HDL to start to lower that LDL. So high levels of HDL, I shouldn't say high, Le good levels of HDL cholesterol are really, really necessary for lowering your risk of heart disease and stroke. So before I go deeper into that, I'm going to give you guys a couple of research studies as well, but I just want to make, help you understand that the HDL particle, so high density lipoprotein is synthesized mainly by the liver, but also by the intestines. So your liver health and your intestinal health is going to play a huge role in your HDL levels. So if you don't have a good HDL level, it's because you need to heal the intestinal tract and you need to heal it and clean out the liver. Those are the root causes of your HDL being too low. I get asked all the time, my HDL is lower than my doctors want to see it. Let's heal the gut. Let's clean up the liver and your HDL will correct itself. When extra cholesterol occurs on your hepatic tissue, which is your liver tissue, it gets picked up by the HDLs, the high density lipoproteins through a process called reverse cholesterol transport. I'm not gonna explain this whole process to you because it's more of like my institute um, that would learn this deep level. And, but just know that when that happens, when the hepatic tissue has too much, HDL is when it comes in and plays this role. So next I wanna talk about the adrenal glands. Because this is the other gland that is extremely important and responsible for elevated levels of cholesterol or extremely low levels of cholesterol. So um, in order to secure this continuous supply of cholesterol in the body, because we need it, we need HDL and we need LDL, um, the adrenal glands actually synthesize cholesterol. They metabolize intracellular cholesterol. So any cholesterol that's inside the cell, the adrenal glands are helping metabolize it. Or they actually obtain cholesterol from circulating lipoproteins and help restore it to bring it into tissues and nerve cells. So this is super, super important. If you have very, very low cholesterol, low LDL, you're going to have nervous system weakness. The nervous system runs every single system in our body. You are an electrical system. You can have a clean limb system. You can have strong genetics. You can have clean glands. But if you do not have a strong current running that system, you have no electricity to your body. There's no power. 
So it's very important to know that the adrenals play this huge role. So I'm going to take it one step further and hopefully I don't lose you. I know this is a general population call, but I do want to provide the science for you. Um, the hypothalamus is what produces something called corticotropin releasing hormone. That hormone is then released to the pituitary, which is in the back. You have, you have a anterior and posterior pituitary gland and it tells the pituitary gland, Hey, we need you to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. And that is saying, Hey, basically it's saying, please make this hormone and tell the adrenal glands to release their cortisol. That's all it is. It's a chain of command. The hypothalamus tells the pituitary, the pituitary tells the adrenal, the adrenal makes it based on its commands. Okay. So low density lipoprotein accounts for 80% of the cholesterol that's delivered to the adrenal. So very, very important that we have LDL. So we don't want such a low level of LDL that we're in danger because if we don't have enough LDL, we don't have this process being delivered to the adrenal gland. Now, cholesterol is stored within the adrenal cortical cells. So cholesterol is very, very important to adrenal cellular function. If you have really high or high cortisol, why would you have high cortisol? I have a stressful life. I'm always under stress in a job or I'm overworking, under sleeping, whatever it is, eating really bad foods. These are all things that will cause stress that will increase your levels of cortisol. So cortisol from long-term stress can actually increase your cholesterol. So you can have a healthy diet, but a stressful life and have high cholesterol. The reason is, is because adrenaline is released. Adrenaline then triggers the fight or flight hormone. And when that happens, this triglycerides, this triggers triglycerides, which then boosts our quote unquote bad cholesterol. When we have excess triglycerides in the blood, then the body says, oh, I need LDL. I need LDL to transport these triglycerides out. And so we start seeing quote unquote bad cholesterol rays to carry out the triglycerides. Everybody following me? So high stress equals high cholesterol, period. Um, low density lipoprotein is, you know, a really, really important piece. So here's the last thing I want to tell you though about LDL. LDL, this is the one that people consider the bad cholesterol. It actually fights infection. It actually fights infection. It fights inflammation. And it transports vitamins that are essential in your body, like vitamin D, vitamin K, vitamin A, and the list goes on from there. So if your LDL gets too low, you will actually weaken your immune system. And it causes a lot of problems in the nervous system and in the bone and connective tissue system. So if you are on the L word, I should say, I don't want to somebody type it in the chat, but one of the most popular meds to regulate your cholesterol, um, it is actually very highly detrimental to the human function of the body. So there's actually, um, there's a book called Lipitor, the Thief of Memory. Uh, there's several books to read on cholesterol. Where we've learned that these statins and these drugs that are actually controlling the levels of cholesterol are causing the LDL to get so low that they're causing and contributing to things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. They are contributing to osteoporosis and osteopenia, and they are contributing to the depletion of your nervous system and bone and connective tissue system because the LDL gets too low and we don't have that that coating on the nerve cells like we need. So nervous system function is not working properly. So this is very, very important when people are considering getting on a cholesterol med, I think education is the most powerful thing we can offer to people. Is the simply put, if you change your diet and you manage your stress, your cholesterol will be a non-issue. It will just come down. So I wanna give you a couple of stats to close out. If you get an LDL, um, it, it's basically LDL is known as the rebuilder and the repairer, and it, it repairs damage and injury to the body. So smokers will have an increased level of LDL cholesterol because it causes a lot of damage to the body. So if your LDL gets below 70, 
in this is according to the American Cardiology Journal of Neurology study. They showed that any LDL below 70 increased the risk of stroke by 65%. 65% increase in risk of stroke if your LDL was below 70. If your LDL was below 50, which most of your doctors will go, oh, your LDL is 50, we're doing great. This is so wonderful. They will believe that because they think lower is better. It actually increased your risk of stroke by 300%. It is very dangerous to be on a lot of these uh, immunosuppressant drugs, which essentially is what they are. So to say LDL is the problem or this bad cholesterol is like saying the Band-Aid that you put on your sore is a problem. The body only makes what it needs based on the state of the liver, period. Fatty liver will be caused by excess glucose from refined sugars, triglyceride fatty acids, et cetera, and it requires higher insulin. When high insulin is released, it'll trigger an enzyme in the liver to make more cholesterol. So diabetics oftentimes have more cholesterol as well when we are on a lot of insulin meds. So there's a lot of things to look at. If you have too high of glucose and you have fatty liver, you're going to make more cholesterol. The last thing I want to make note of is that very low density lipoproteins are um, particles in the blood. So they're like little particles in the blood that actually carry the triglycerides. So if you don't have enough of this LDL, you're going to have a really hard time losing weight and breaking down fats and carrying out fat soluble vitamins that are essential for human health. So that was a little bit deeper, but I wanted to kind of give you guys the, the scope. If you have elevated cholesterol, it can one be one of the main causations is bad diet. Number two is high stress. Number three is gut and intestinal injury. And number four is liver or adrenal weakness. So four and five, I should say liver weakness, adrenal weakness. So these are the things that you want to address. Now, how do I address them? Number one, diet, first of all, will change almost everything in your body. Diet alone is going to get your body into an alkaline environment. If you can start shifting towards more organic plant life, you will see your body shift immediately with inflammation markers, everything, digestive enzymes increasing, brain fog going down, energy going up, diet is everything. And it's one very free change that you can make. And um, people always say organic food's expensive. And I say coffee, alcohol, and meat is expensive, like very expensive. Um, I have feed an entire family of six, all organic for way less than some of my friends that don't eat the way I eat. Um, we'll put it that way. So I want to give you guys that inspiration that just changing your diet alone will take care of your cholesterol. And if you're already doing a good diet and you're dealing with cholesterol, you will want to support your liver and you will want to support your adrenal glands and you will want to um, work on your stress factors. So breath work, getting to bed early is a huge part of having high, of having healthy cholesterol. If you get to bed too late, you're missing essential chunks of sleep that are actually regulating this hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. It actually happens between the hours of nine and midnight. So if you can at least be asleep by 10, you're going to have a better shot at not having dysregulated hormones and high cholesterol. So sleep, activity, intake of food, and lifestyle are the primary reasons of elevated cholesterol. I hope that was helpful. That was like a turbo session in cholesterol. <laughs> um, but if you, whoever brought you to this call, they can help you. We work together with many different modalities um, to help you get you back into balance. So if one of our favorite approaches is our standard 30-day lifestyle transformations, really putting you on 100% organic superfood reset, getting pesticides out, getting parasites out, and really getting the stress off the liver and the gut to restore intestinal function. And this is when you will start to see all your levels normalize. Um, if you have things like heavy metal toxicity or deeper things that are affecting the liver, please speak to the person that brought you here because they will help you. And we work with a very powerful zeolite that captures those metals out of the body. Um, so this call is specifically to educate you if I was the one that brought you here, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, whoever brought you to this call, reach out to them for a resource or a connection, and they will make some suggestions to you with a discount attached based on um, what they can offer you. So 
I hope that was helpful. I'm going to stop recording and we will